We're going to play a little game here. Now, just say for argument's sake that I give you $1. And what we've got is a race. Okay, and we've got a few people in the race. Here they are. So this is person A, B, C, D, E, and F, for argument's sake. All right, so you don't know a lot about these people. So if I said to you, uh, and I don't endorse gambling, FYI, um, but if I said to you, with that $1 I'm going to give you, you can bet on any person you want in the race, go for it. And you might say, I bet on C because like that stick figure looks good, or I don't know what your reasoning are, my name starts with F, so I'm going to go for that person, and, and that would be good. But what about if I told you some more information? What about if I told you that one of these, it was D, E, or F, is going to win the race? I know it. I know that because I'm telling you this information, you will start to reconsider your bet. Okay, so if, if at the start of asking this, I, you know, I asked you and you said, um, I, you know, I'm going to bet on A, if I told you that D, E or F wins the race and I said, do you want to change your bet? I, I hope you'd say, yeah, because you know that A doesn't win the race. You know that one of D, E and F wins the race. So I'm hoping you'd change your bet. That's what conditional probability is all about. The probability that an event occurs given that, that's, that's the, the crucial word, given that. So given that D, E or F wins the race, would you consider changing your bet if you were initially betting on A, B or C? Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. So given that another event has already occurred um, is called conditional probability. So the probability that event A occurring given that B has occurred is denoted by this. This is in the notation and should be read. The probability of A given that B has happened. Okay, so that little um, pipe symbol there should be read in probability terms as given that. All right, this is the formula. The probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. And or, or probability of B given A happened is the same as the probability of A intersect B over the probability of A. Now notice what happens here. Whatever is the given goes to the denominator. The given goes to the denominator. Now, why is that a formula? Why does that work? All right, well, again, with the addition rule, what I hope is the conditional probability formula just makes complete sense to you once you see it, okay? So I'm going to skip over this stuff here and go to some Venn diagrams. All right, so what I'm looking at here is the probability of A, all right? Let's shade that. Now this one here, I want to shade the probability of A given B has happened. Okay, so what's happened here is B has occurred. Right? I know this event happened. So nothing else is relevant. All of this other stuff is unimportant to me. Okay, so whatever happens in A only and neither A nor B, is not important to me. The only thing that's important now is B has happened. So again, if you want to do it in your mind, like forget everything else that is um, in, in this diagram, forget it all. So you can pretend like that's not there. And the only thing that's important to us is just this B thing. All right, and what we're noting here is we're looking at the probability of A given B. So B has happened and we want to know the probability of A. And the only thing that we've got here in terms of A is the intersection part, okay? So the chance of A happening, the probability of A happening given that B has happened is equal to the probability of A intersect B, which is this part here, all right, the intersection, because that's the only remnants of A is the ones that A has in common with B, over, now because the sample space has been reduced, it's not over, 
everything, it's only over the probability that B has happened because all this other stuff now is not important to us. So it's over the probability of B. So the probability basically is shrunk from all of this stuff down to just this stuff here because I know that B has happened. There's no chance of this other stuff happening because, well, they've told us that B happened. Going back to, uh, and so that's what we're going to say is the probability of A given B is equal to or is the same as the probability of the intersection of A and B over the probability of B. And that's really what this um, articulates in your notes here. Conditional probability is based on a smaller number of possible outcomes. The sample space has shrunk. So notice how with this one here, I gave you a dollar and said to bet on six individuals. Okay, but then what I told you is that extra bit of information that it was D, E or F had won the race, i.e. the sample space had shrunk. Okay, so that's an important way to think about it. So um, because the outcome of the first stage is already known. Okay, so we know something about it. So thinking about the formula, the probability of A intersect B equals the probability, uh, A given B is the same as the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. And it's different from the probability of A. So A intersect B is different from A because of that reduced sample space. All right, so finding conditional probabilities using a Venn diagram. Consider this Venn, di uh, Venn diagram displaying the number of events um, belonging to A and B. Find the following probabilities. So the probability of A happening, that's all of this stuff here, which is 3 plus 2, which is 5 over everything that can possibly occur. So it is three, five, uh, ooh, mental blank, 11, 12, five twelfths. All right, what's the probability of getting A and B, the intersection? Well, that's going to be two out of 12. Simplify those props, one sixth. Okay, the probability of A given B, Okay, so you can think about this two ways. You can just go, oh, what's the formula? Probability of A intersect B over the probability of B, and then get the intersection, which is 2, over the probability of B, which is 2 and 6, which is 8. So the answer is going to be a quarter, okay? And that formula, I think, is given to you on the methods formula sheet. Again, I've got it here. Yes, it is. So this is three, four methods. I've got um, the three, four methods exam in my hand here, and I can see here that the probability of A given B is um, equal to um, the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. So that formula is given to you. So you can use it, but it's so important that you understand what's happening. Okay, so the probability of A given B means that B has happened, right? This is the only thing that I'm worried about because that can't happen and that can't happen. Okay. So what are the chances of A happening given that B has happened? Well, what's left over from A? A and B is, that's two out of the total chance of B happening, which is two plus six, which is eight, which is a quarter. So that's why the formula works. That's essentially what it's doing is picking out the relevant bits from the Venn diagram. Okay, so I'd love it if you said, Hey, uh, Mr. Miller, you know, I don't actually need that conditional probability formula because I get it. No, that's, that's, that's really what we want. All right, now the probability of B given A has happened. All right, so I've got to backtrack here a little bit and remove some of my drawing on the diagram. All right, so let's have a look. Probability of B given A has happened. So from the diagram, I'm just going to focus my attention on the stuff that's important to me. So I've been told that A has happened. So what's the chance of B happening? Well, B is the only leftover parts of B are in this intersection. So that's two out of a possible, how many elements in A? There's five. The answer is two fifths. Okay, the other way we can do it is using a two-way table um, and students struggle with this. From a group of 20 mathematicians, 12 were applied and eight were pure. Okay, applied mathematicians use mathematics to solve problems. Pure mathematicians, they're the ones that kind of do cool things with maths, but really it's not like that important. Like 
proof, things like that, proving why a triangle is a triangle. Um, have you ever thought about that? Why is a triangle a triangle? I actually don't know because I'm not a pure mathematician. I'm more of an applied mathematician. I just use the fact that a triangle is a triangle and apply it, find areas with it, find volumes with it, things like that. Uh, five or both. I wonder if there's other mathematicians, statisticians perhaps, not sure. Mathematician is chosen at random. Let A be the event that an applied mathematician was chosen and B be the event that a pure mathematician was chosen, represented in a two-way table and a Venn diagram. Well, I'll be completely honest with you and say that I tend to prefer the Venn diagram, uh, the Venn diagram over the two-way. But I'm going to get out of my comfort zone here and do the two-way table first. Okay, so what do I know? I know that five were both applied and pure math mathematicians. So that means A and B. So that's that part there. I would always go for that thing there. Where it's available, slot that information straight in. All right, 12 were applied math uh, from a group of 20. So that's got to be 20. Um, 12 were applied mathematicians. Now applied is event A. So the total of A is 12, and eight were pure, that's the total of B. All right, so now I can put in the rest of this stuff quite easily. That's got to be three, that's got to be seven. Um, this has to be 12, this has to be five, that has to be eight. All right. Let's do the same thing with a Venn. So I've got five in the intersection, 12 are applied, so that must be seven. Eight were pure, already I've used five, which were both pure and applied. So that's going to be three. Seven and five is 12. 12 and three is 15. That means that there's 20 mathematicians in total. So five are neither pure nor applied. Stats, something like that. All right, find the probability that the person chosen at random was a pure mathematician. All right, so what are the chances of them being pure? Pure is event B, so that's going to be eight out of 20. So probability of B equals eight in 20, four in 10, oh, two in five. Okay, the old halving method to simplify. All right, a pure mathematician given that they were an applied mathematician. Again, what this sentence is telling you is I know something. They are an applied mathematician. So what are the chances of them being a pure mathematician if I'm telling you they are an applied mathematician? The notation is going to look as, followed, as follows. Pure mathematician is B given that I'm telling you they are an applied mathematician. So B given A, again, you can use the formula on this, which is probability of B and A, or A and B over the probability of A, or we can go to the diagram and simply look at it. B given A has happened. So A has happened, so they're the, that's the only thing I need to look at, all right, of which there's 12 possible outcomes, and B represents five of those 12. Again, if we look at what just happened there, I did that visually off the diagram, probability of B intersect A is this part here over the probability of A, which is just 12. So that's how those values get slammed in either using the formula or um, by looking at it. So it's 5 twelfths. All right, an applied mathematician given that they were a pure mathematician. So you know how you can do this, the probability of A intersect B is the same as the probability of B intersect A. Well, girls, it's not necessarily the case that B given A is the same as the probability of A given B. It might be if the numbers are manufactured enough, but generally speaking, they're not the same thing because they're giving you different pieces of information. All right, so we can't assume that it's going to be 5 twelfths like the previous question. And really the only way of doing it is to look at the diagram or use the formula. Probability of A given B is the equal to the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. But let's just think about it. An applied mathemati mathematician given they were a pure. So these are the pures, okay, of which 
there's eight of them, and applieds represent five of them. Okay, so five in eight. So there's a much higher chance of getting an applied mathematician given that they're a pure mathematician, and it seems obvious. There's fewer um, uh, pure mathematicians, of which five of them are also applied. All right, fill in the gaps in the table, in the probability table opposite. Probability tables always add to one. All right, so we've got 0 0.5, we've got 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and those two added together equals one. All right, so there are the gaps filled in. So remember that anytime you see the word probability table, it has to equal one. The intersection, probability of A given B is 0 0.3 or 3 tenths if you want. A union B, well, that's in terms of a Venn diagram going to be A only, intersection and B only, or it's going to be not this part here. So I can do it one of two ways. I can not the 0 0.4, which is going to be 0 0.6, or I can add A only, which is this one, A and B and B only. All right, so either way, I'm going to get 0 0.6, so 0 0.6. All right, B given A has happened. What are the chances of B happening given A has happened? So this is what we know, girls. We know that this event A has happened. So the sample space is going to shrink down to 0 0.4, okay? Because none of this stuff is possible. And then what we're looking at here is the probability um, that B has happened. So here's B, okay? Um, given A has happened, which is 0 0.3 over 0 0.4. Now we can also view this in terms of a Venn diagram and you might find it a little easier to do it um, with a Venn diagram. And in fact, I think I've done that wrong. So this is gonna be a good example of how to kind of check your work here. I have done this wrong, I believe. All right, so A and B is 0 0.3. So I'm gonna pop that in there. A and um, not B or A only, so let's put A, B. A only is 0 0.1, B only, uh, B and not A is B only, that's 0 0.2, and neither A nor B is 0 0.4, let's double check, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 1, okay. All right, so let's do this same question. So the chance of B happening, um, B happening given A has happened. All right, no, I did get it right. All right, there you go. Right, I do know what I'm doing. So this, let's just change color so you can see it here. This is saying, hey, A has happened. That stuff there is all you need to worry about. 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 is 0 0.4. Now, what are the chances of B happening? Well, let's have a look at what B is. That's that intersection part there of 0 0.3. All right, so you can't leave your answer like this. So what we're going to do is convert it to uh, a, a fraction by multiplying by 10 and multiplying by 10, which gives you three over four, okay? Uh, you'd rather do that than do 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.4, okay? Um, and try to fumble around with the decimal. So at this point here, I would absolutely convert to fractions. All right, looks like a tricky one here. What we're looking at is the probability of not A given not B, okay? So B hasn't happened, okay? And what are the chances of not getting A? All right, Whew, this is tough to think about. Probability of not A intersect not B over the probability of not B. So that's just using the conditional probability formula. All right, now what would that look like? Okay, not A and not B. Well, that's just that part there. So from the Venn diagram, I can see that that is 0 0.4. Now not B totals to 0 0.5. And if I times that by 10 and times that by 10, I get four fifths. Okay, so you can see here, like that one there, I'll be completely honest with you and say, 
I can't even begin to think about that statement in my head. That that will um, send me around the bend. So what I tend to do is use the formula for ones like this to help me pick out the right parts in the Venn diagram. All right, example four. Given that for two events A and B, we know a couple of things. We know the probability of A is 0 0.7, and we know the probability of 0 0.3 is, um, a probability of B is 0 0.3. And what we know also is the probability of A given B is 0 0.4. All right, well, let's write out like what we know. So the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A intersect B over the probability of A. All right, and we know that this thing here, B given A, they tell us that that is 0.4. Uh, we don't know the intersection up in the information above here, but I do know the probability of A. I know that that's 0 0.7. So I've got the probability of A intersect B over the probability of A, which I know from the question is 0 0.7. Okay, so what would we do here? Well, the first question requires us to work out what the probability of A intersect B is. And hey, that's really convenient because wouldn't I just multiply both sides by 0 0.7 and I'm going to get the answer. I'm going to get probability of A intersect B. So I'm going to do just that. Probability of A intersect B is equal to 0 0.7 times 0 0.4. And uh, yeah, wouldn't that be what, 7, 4 is 28? Wouldn't that be 2.8? Hopefully there's outrage at this point um, because you know that that can't be an answer because didn't you say a couple of lessons ago, Mr. Miller, that the probabilities can't be more than one? Absolutely. So this is where you need to be able to handle your decimals. Okay. So the answer to this, in fact, is 0 0.28. But another way of thinking about this, girls, is actually converting these to fractions. So this is 7 over 10 times 4 over 10. And what we can do now is um, cancel that down to 5, um, 5, 1, and that's going to be 7 over 25, okay? And so if you're worried about handling decimals, it can be easily done by just converting to fractions. And I find that the method students I teach who use fractions uh, or convert decimals to fractions have way more success with problems than students who stick with decimals. So... Move over to fractions, girls. All right. Now, this one here says the probability of A intersect B. All right, so what we're going to do is work out the probability of A given B, and I know that's the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. All right, I know that the probability of A intersect B is, well, I can write down 0 0.28 over the probability of B, which is 0 0.3. There's no way examiners in year 12 are gonna let you write that down um, as an answer. So we're gonna times that by 100, times that by 100, and I've got 28 on 30, uh, which is 14 on 15, okay? How would I do it with fractions? Well, I'm gonna say that it's seven on 25, divided by the probability of B, which is 3 over 10. 7 on 25, not 22, times 10 on 3, 2, 5, 7 twos are 14, 5 threes are 15. All right, so there's how we get it with using the fractional figures versus the decimals. Again, I find that the fractions are a hell of a lot less clunky. All right, so here's your work, um, students. Set work is 8D. Um, good luck with that.